Don't trip yourself up. Aaron, I want you to be yourself. Who's that confidence? One more time. Guys, can we give it up for Aaron Yoon, please? Let's go, Aaron. Let's, Let's go, go Aaron. Aaron. You got it, Aaron. Oh, he was yesterday. Let's Aaron, one more time. Go. Before I make any decisions. Chad, before you make any decisions, let's get together. I'm gonna to show you exactly why your home didn't sell and why mine are selling for over asking price with multiple offers in the same market. And if it makes financial sense for you, then you can make a decision from there. I've got time tomorrow at four or six. What works best for you? There we go, guys. Do you feel the difference? Guys, give it up for Aaron Yoon one more time. Do you guys feel the difference? If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I've talked about The Breakfast Club for the last two years, but I've never shown you The Breakfast Club until now. This is the role play responsible for taking agents from making less than 100K per year to over 100K per month. If this is something you wanna be a part of, go on to Instagram, DM me at Mr. Aaron Yoon, message me the words, Breakfast Club, and then I'll invite you into the call. Raise your voices, raise your voice. If this call and being a part of this call every single morning has either changed your life, changed your business, or at least had a major impact on your business, raise your voices, please. Yes, sir. Major. I want you to be honest because there are people on this call who have never made 100K in a year, who make 100K in a month, right? There's people on this call who've never taken listings, who are now top agents, listing agents in their marketplace. There are people on this call who have literally changed their business after 30 days. And I'm not saying that to brag about this call. What I'm, say what I'm saying that is because you have a choice this week. The question that I want you to ask yourself is why not me? Right? Why can't I be one of those testimonials? Eric Thomas said that, and I said it in my video this morning, and it gives me chills up and down my spine every time I say it, which is innovation is rewarded, execution is worship. And I want you guys to say that with me real quick. Innovation is rewarded, execution is worship. Let me hear that from you guys, please. Innovation is rewarded, execution is worship. Does anybody know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? Do the work. You get paid for doing shit. It means this, guys. It's like you guys showed up here, right? A lot of you guys showed up. Some of you guys will hide behind a muted microphone, right? And the idea is great. And there's value in the idea. There's value in you actually being here. But the execution of the idea is what sets people apart. That's where the real value is, right? So if you're asking yourself, why can't it be me? The question, the way you've got to answer that question is by participation, is by taking the action, putting yourself out there, demanding excellence from yourself on a daily basis. And that's what sets you apart from every motherfucker in your industry. I promise you that. It's what will lead to changing your life is that participating mindset, the execution mindset. So I want you to keep that in mind as you approach this week, guys, to make the decision to put yourself out there and focus on the execution part. And it starts with how you answer this question right here, which is who wants to be the first to jump in and get better at the job? Aaron you. Aaron you. Way to start the morning. Now, I'm gonna pick on I'm gonna pick on Aaron Yoon, even though Nick Tarani's Nick Tarani me over and over and over again. You'll get your shot, I promise you. But I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go ahead and go for Aaron Yoon this morning. But I want to ask you guys, what do you think is the most? What objection do you guys think that you're gonna get the most over the next couple of months? September, October, November, December. What are you gonna get? Springtime objection. Right. Right. Fifty-six percent of the time, made up statistic you will get that objection. And so if you can become great here, how would it change your business while everybody else is struggling, right? Rate yourself really quickly, scale of one to 10, how good am I at handling that objection? Not once, but twice. You get really good there. You take yourself from that four, that five, and you turn it into a nine or a 10, and it's gonna be the difference between you just crushing the listing market over the fall and winter, and you struggling trying to keep up and have that conversation. We're in a communication business, Aaron, you're up first hey i appreciate your call but i'm waiting until spring i decided i'm gonna wait until spring okay chad it sounds like you still want to make a move you're just gonna wait chad what exactly has you waiting until spring the market uh the market's not good we were on the market for six months we didn't sell so i don't think the market is where it needs to be right now my agent told me that i should wait until spring yeah chad i'm hearing that a lot i'm sorry that happened to you guys chad what exactly are you waiting for what's going to happen in the springtime 
Well, I mean, there's going to be a lot more buyers. Everybody knows that, you know, the market is highest in the springtime. So we're going to wait until then. Uh, do you have a buyer for me, Aaron? Is that why you're calling or, or what do you want exactly? Yeah, Chad, I work with several buyers that are looking for a property like yours. Now, Chad, let's say you wait till the springtime and the market doesn't go up. What would that do for your moving plans? Uh, well, I don't know. I guess we'll deal with that when it comes. Aaron, really quickly, really quickly. I gave you all of the, I gave you my problem. Okay. And this is where we've got to listen. We get the answers that we want. We got to make sure that we roll with that. Now, what is my problem? Really quickly. You're not getting the price that you wanted. I'm not getting the price that I want. Why? Because there's not enough buyers. And so what does that say? What is my problem? Because I, I would sell my house today, it sounds like it, if I thought I could, right? Okay. So it sounds to me like it's a, like I don't believe in the market, right? Well, the market's mm. really not that great right now. I can't get a, what I want. So I'm going to wait until spring when there's more buyers. So basically, you've got to translate that. You've got to do a really good job of listening and let people tell you exactly who you need to be, right? I just don't think the market will help me. I think in the spring market, though, I'll be able to get what I want. And that's where you have to really kind of key in on that, Aaron. And when every, anybody tells you that they don't have confidence, what do you have to do? Uh, get them right. confident in the market. You got to give them that confidence, right, Aaron? So let's let's start that again. I'm going to give you that objection. You repeated and affirmed that perfectly, right? Anytime somebody tells you that they're going to wait until spring, you got to kick down their defense mechanisms, kick down that wall, and just let them know that that's okay for now, right? Because okay. we haven't asked them to make any decisions yet, which is great. So you've decided that you are going to be selling this house. It's just a matter of timing. Next question. That's where we go into the, the, the problem, right? And people feel comfortable telling you that problem once they realize is that once they realize that you accept what they said, right? So Aaron, I appreciate your call, but I'm going to wait until spring. Okay, Chad, what exactly has you waiting until springtime? Repeat and affirm you abandoned that right after I complimented you about it. Aaron, what, I, I'm going to be waiting until spring. Okay, Chad, it sounds like you still want to make that move. It's just you're waiting for something. What's got you waiting till spring? Well, I don't think the market's where we need it to be right now. Um, and my agent said that we should probably wait till spring when there's more buyers on the market. Chad, it's interesting that you say that because while your home sat on the market, I sold six properties just like yours. So the market's doing great. So Chad, it sounds like as long as we could get a certain price, you'd still want to make this move, right? Yeah, I mean, I would, Aaron, if you had a buyer, but you know, I'm just not interested in listing the property right now. Uh, but if you had a buyer in between now and spring, I'd definitely pay you a commission for it. Uh, do you have a buyer or somebody who's interested? Oh, that's perfect, Chad. I do have buyers looking for properties like yours. Uh, what exactly has you, what's exactly stopping you from listing your property right now? Well, I mean, the market, I don't want to go through all the trouble of putting my house on the market again and having it sit there. You know what I mean? I just went through this song and dance before. So, you know, I, I just, I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine. Totally, Chad. That's annoying to, it's frustrating and annoying to do all that work and get nowhere. So Chad, if I can show you exactly what we can do to get your property sold, just like I've been doing with my other properties, without getting into that hassle, sounds like that's exactly what you're looking for, right? Yeah, it is, but I don't see how you're gonna do that, Aaron. Again, my house sat on the market, it didn't sell, um, and I don't really wanna list this property right now. Yeah, Chad, I, I wouldn't wanna list it either if that was the results I got. So Chad, let's do this. Before we make any decisions, let's, I want to show you exactly what we can do to get your property sold without going through all that hassle and frustration that you went through last time and get you the money that you need to move to wherever. If it makes sense, we can make some decisions from there. So anytime it's a market issue, guys, right? Anytime it's a market issue, I want you to think one thing, okay? When I say it's a market issue, what, how can you translate that into one word? My problem. Money. How, how can you guys translate that? Price. Oh, guys, I'm gonna, I'm shaking my phone right now. I'm, sh I'm shaking my phone to try to get some answers out of you guys this morning. It's insecurity, right? Somebody said doubt. Yes. And so, anytime somebody tells you that that's a problem of theirs, I want you guys to be very conscious about giving them the opposite, right? And what's the opposite of insecurity? Confidence. Oh, security. Oh, security. Oh, right? Or security, depending on which way you look at it. But it's confidence, right? 
So our tonality, the way that we speak, the way that we finish should all give me and inspire me with confidence. You know what I mean? And Aaron, when you're kind of going through these motions, I want you to be, I don't want you to be afraid to create some opportunity for yourself. Get me to say yes to something, right? And so if somebody says, yes, I don't see how you're going to do that because I, you know, I don't want to list the property, right? Now you can ask them, what's your concern about listing the property? And, but you already know it's insecurity. So, but you can say that in the form of like a question, you know what I mean? Which is Aaron, I know that you want to sell this property. Aaron, would you, would you, um, would you be hesitant about listing this property? If you knew a hundred percent that this property would be sold in the next seven to 10 days and it made sense for you financially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why uh, would I say it like that, guys? Can anybody tell me why I would say it like that? Force them into that, yes. Force them into that, yes. It also takes them to a place where they have to say yes, but how? Yeah, yes, but something. You know what I mean? And ultimately, that's what you want, okay? And then once you've got that developed, Kyle, I need you to mute your microphone. I'm gonna have to punt you off of here. I don't wanna do that. I'm feeling nice this morning. So Aaron, give that back to me and play offense in the form of a question, okay? So Aaron, like that sounds great. Like if you had a buyer, I would gladly pay you a 3% commission, uh, but I don't wanna list this home. Chad, if you knew that by listing the home, Chad, if you knew that by listing your home, you could get your property sold in the next seven to 10 days at full asking price, would you do it? Yeah, but I don't really see how that's gonna happen in this marketplace. Chad, that's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I specialize in. In fact, before we make any decisions, Chad, let's get together and go over exactly how we can do that for you so we can get you moved over to Cincinnati. I got time today at four or six. What works best for you? Very good, but this is where we introduce that authority, Aaron. This is where we take those weak sauce words that we normally use and we amplify them a little bit, right? So perfect job there, but how can you make it great? How can you inspire more confidence by the words that you use, right? So Aaron, before you make any decisions, let's do this. Let's get together tomorrow at six. I'll show you exactly why your house didn't get any offers in this market and how I was able to generate multiple offers in the same market for my clients. And if I can make this make sense, Aaron, then you can make some decisions from there. Do you see how like I'm doubling down on the confidence, right, Aaron? Yeah. Instead of just going, hey, we'll go over exactly what I can do for you and da da da, right? That's how normally we would speak, right? But when somebody's asking you for confidence, give it to them, right? Aaron, before I make any decisions, close me up. Chad, before, I, before you make any decisions, let's go over exactly Let's go over. Let's go over. I'm going to show you, right? I'm bringing that value. I'm going <laughs> to demonstrate why your house didn't sell and why I was able to generate multiple offers from my clients in the same market, right? That's taking away all of the insecurity right before you ask them for a yes. Okay. Right, Aaron? Yeah. Good. Give it to me. So Chad, before you make any decisions, I'm going to show you exactly why your home didn't sell and what I've been doing to get my property sold with multiple offers for over asking price and how we can do that for you. So Chad, I've got time today at four or six. What would work best for you? Are you ready for ticky tackness? right? I want you to emphasize, especially with expired listings, Aaron, in this same market, right? Mm, because that's it. my whole problem, it's the market, right? Okay. So Aaron, before you make any decisions at all, let's get together tomorrow at six. I'll go over and show you exactly why your house didn't sell in this market. Aaron, while I was able, why I was able to generate multiple offers for my clients, in the same market and if I can make this make sense well then we can make some decisions from there Aaron I have time tomorrow at 6 or would 7 be better for you what are you feeling oozing out of me right now Aaron the sauce yeah that's not deodorant that's not old spice that's confidence as Deion Sanders would say so close me up one more time Chad before we make any decisions any, any decisions I, I'm Chad, before you make any decisions, let's get together. I'm gonna to show you exactly why your home didn't sell and why my property has got multiple offers in the same market to sell over asking price. And if it makes fine, and you can make. Don't trip yourself up. Aaron, I want you to be yourself. Who's that confidence? One more time. Guys, can we give it up for Aaron Yoon, please? Let's go, Aaron. Let's just, go, Aaron. Aaron. You got it, Aaron. And he was yesterday. Let's Aaron, one more time. Aaron. Before I make any decisions. Chad, before you make any decisions, let's get together. I'm gonna show you exactly why your home didn't sell and why mine are selling for over asking price with multiple offers in the same market. And you can make, 
And if it makes financial sense for you, then you can make a decision from there. I've got time tomorrow at four or six. What works best for you? There we go, guys. Do you feel the difference? Guys, give it up for Aaron Yoon one more time. Do you guys feel the difference? Uh, Assertive, confident language and the difference it makes to the person who's receiving it because your clients are just a mirror of you. You know what I mean? If you're speaking weak and insecurely to them right before you ask them for the business, how are they going to feel? They're going to feel weak and insecure about you. You know what I mean? So if you want your clients to be on board and think, oh, my God, this guy might be able to help me, right? Oh, my God, I think this guy can actually do it. Listen to the way that he's talking. If you want confidence, if you want people to put confidence in you, you've got to give them confidence. And that's the moral of the story there. So anytime you hear anything about the market being weak, guys, I want it to click in your brains that, man, all this person is asking me for is some confidence here. Who wants to jump in here and be next to get better at their job than they were yesterday? Isaac I love that. Sienna oh, Bowman Camp, let's get some female in here. Hey, Sienna, I appreciate your call, but I'm not doing anything uh, until springtime. We've decided that we're going to hold off and uh, just enjoy, you know, the fall and the winter and then figure out some things from there. Oh, awesome, Chad. So you guys definitely want to sell. It's just a matter of time. Now, what has you waiting until the spring? Well, I mean, we... I'm just, we're not ready to do anything right now. We just went through six months of our house not selling. Uh, we're not in a hurry to sell this house, Amanda. So, you know, we're just going to wait until spring when there's more buyers. Totally. And Chad, I would be so upset if my house was sitting on the market for six months, especially with the way the market is right now. Now, would you be hesitant to list your home if you could guarantee that it would sell this time within 30 days? Uh, I don't know, I, you know, but who can guarantee anything? You know what I mean? It's like, all you guys are calling me right now saying that you could have, you should, my house should have sold, that they could bring me offers, but none of you guys brought buyers by while my house was on the market, right? So I just, forgive me for my language, but I just think what you guys are saying right now is, is kind of bullshit. You know what? I understand, Chad. And when your home was sitting on the market, I was actually busy getting my own listing sold. In those six months, I sold 15 homes, half of them over asking price within seven days. Now, Chad, if I was able to do that to your home, it sounds like you would still want to sell, correct? Uh, I mean, possibly, uh, but I don't see how you're going to do that. I don't see how you would make that happen. And listen, I, I've got a real estate agent that I like, and I wouldn't cut my friend, who's my friend. I wouldn't cut them out of the deal. And so, you know, we've got an agent already, uh, and we're not really interested in changing agents. Okay. Okay. Good to have a friend in the business. Now, Chad, if I could get your home sold within 30 days and still get your friend in on the deal, ensure that they're getting paid. Is that something we're talking about? Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? How are you going to do that? What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, Chad, I know it's a little confusing. That's what I want to go over with you, how I can get your home sold, make sure your friend is still getting paid and you're headed where you need to be next with the correct financial situation. Now, Chad, do you have time at four or would six be better this evening to go over that? Uh, listen, listen, young lady, I, I, you know, I like what you're saying. I like how you're being uh, aggressive. I can appreciate that. I'm in sales too. Um, I just don't know if we're ready yet. Let me talk to my wife and uh, we'll talk about it. And if it's something that we're interested in, um, you know, we can have another conversation so you could email us in the meantime. But to be honest with you, I don't think she wants to meet with a real estate agent. I think she's got a pretty bad taste in her mouth. So I don't think we're going to be meeting with any agents anytime soon. And if I had one show up in my living room, I might get a divorce. So I'm just, listen, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Let me talk to my wife and send me an email. Okay, yeah, I can appreciate that, Chad. If my husband made any decisions about checking with me first, that might end in divorce too. Now, was your wife on the same page when you guys did put the home on the market originally? Yeah, but a lot of things have changed. You know, we sat on the market for six months and it didn't sell. And now we're just winding everything down. Uh, and the last thing that she would want is for somebody to come in and start talking to us about putting our house back on the market. Of course. So here's what we're going to do, Chad. I'm going to send you my pre-listing packet. This is going to have some information about myself, my company, and how I'm able to specialize in getting homes sold the second time around. I want you to again, go. Again, Sienna, I'm going to stop you right there, okay? Because, like, you've got the words down, and that's great, okay? 
what you're getting the D minus on right now is your connection with me, right? In adjusting your basic script to fit the situation. You know what I mean? So if I'm saying something like, you know, Sienna, listen, like how can you get me back on a positive track before you fulfill like what I'm asking you for, right? So if I'm like, listen, my wife doesn't want to go through this process again. Like we just sat on the market for six months. Like how could you get me back on a positive track? How could you repeat and affirm that? Get me back in a positive mindset, result driven, you know what I mean? Before you, before you fulfill that obligation. How can you repeat and affirm that? Listen, my wife's pretty pissed off right now. She's a little bit burnt out on real estate agents, Amanda, uh, uh, Sienna. And so like, you know, I don't, I just don't want to bring another agent in my living room, right? A lot of things have changed. We've sat on the market, we didn't get sold and we just winded down. So like, I don't want, I don't know if that's going to work. How could you repeat and affirm that into a positive? Totally, Chad. I can't imagine the frustration you guys are going through, and I know you need to keep your wife happy. Now, if... <laughs> yeah, Sienna, listen, it sounds to me like your wife wouldn't even want to think about going through that process again unless it got you guys exactly what you wanted and got you to Cincinnati. Sienna, from here, I'm going to go ahead and overnight you what we call a pre-marketing package. It's going to show you exactly why you didn't get any offers over the past six months how I was generating multiple offers for my clients in the same market. I want you to take a look at that with her, come up with a list of questions, concerns, and those will be the first things that we address when we meet on Thursday at six, or would seven be better for you and your wife? Do you notice how number one, when we're talking about the content of the package of information, what am I doing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm layering that and manipulating that with some confidence, right? There's a certain amount of confidence, guys, that people get in you when you're able to like express to them exactly why they fail, right? When you're confident enough to say, I know why your house didn't sell and it sure as shit wasn't the market, right? Yeah. That, how does that make people feel? You know what I mean? So I want you to assert that anytime it's a market problem, right? But I want you guys to understand what, what Sienna just did there with the, let me talk to my wife, right? So a philosophy in prospecting is to not like try to talk people out of things, right? It's to give them what they want and to give it to them better, right? How can you deliver what they're asking you for? You want to talk to your wife? A hundred percent. You should absolutely talk to your wife. Now, Sienna, was she on board when you put this house on the market in the first place? You and your wife, do you guys still want to get to Cincinnati? Yeah, we do. 100%. So Sienna, from here, I'm going to go ahead and overnight you what we call a pre-marketing package. It's going to tell you exactly why your house didn't sell over the past six months, how I was able to generate multiple offers in the same market. And I want you to take a look at that with her when it arrives tomorrow. Come up with a list of questions, all of your concerns, and those will be the first things that we address when we meet on Saturday at six or at seven work better for you and your wife. So Sienna, give that to me real quick, but I want you to be cautious about how you repeat and affirm that. And I want you to finish with confidence. Sienna, let me talk to my wife. Absolutely, Chad. I 100% want you to talk to your wife and get you guys on the same page. Now, was she in agreement when you guys originally listed the house? Yeah, I mean, it was her idea, but a lot of things have changed. Uh, we sat on the market for six months. She's pretty dejected. I think she's had it with real estate agents. And I think the last thing that she wants to do, Amanda, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sienna, is to go through this process again. Totally, Chad. I can't imagine how frustrated you guys are. And you probably don't even want to put an ounce of consideration into doing anything unless you can be 110% sure that the results you want are going to happen. Now, what I'm gonna do from here, Chad, is overnight to my pre-listing packet. This is gonna go over myself, my company, and how I'm able to generate multiple offers for my stop sellers. Saying myself, stop saying myself and my company and that bullshit when I'm asking you to be like, to connect with me. You know what I mean? So Sienna, I'm gonna go ahead and overnight you a package of information. It's gonna tell you why your house didn't sell in this market right? Do you see how I'm doubling down on the confidence and I'm taking out all of the words that don't mean anything, right? It's going to tell you about me, my company. Nobody gives a shit. You're not hearing me now. And I'm not even talking because I'm not saying anything valuable, right? Instead of doing that, use impactful words, change it and give me some impact, which is what I'm asking you for. So give that to me one more time. So what are you going to do? 
All right, Chad. So what I'm going to do from here is overnight you a package of information that's going to go over why your home didn't sell and how I am able to generate multiple offers for my listings, even in this market. Now, I want you to go over that with your wife, get a list of questions down, and those are going to be the first things that we go over. Now, does Wednesday on four or six work better for that, Chad? Do you guys, uh, Sienna, guys, give me the first Sienna Baldwin camp, please. That was Ooh, great, Sienna. Yeah. Nice, nice work. Good job, Sienna. Good job, Sienna. Uh, Practice is one of the uh, reasons why a 21-year-old gal like Sienna Bovenkamp can already be taking three or four properties under contract every month like a gangster. Sienna Bovenkamp, great job. I love how you keep putting yourself out there. That's how you're going to get better. Now, guys, honestly speaking, and I don't want you to bullshit me here, do you guys see the difference and hear the difference when somebody's using confident, assertive language at the end? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it makes sure. all of the difference in the world. I promise you that. Let's go. Uh, we got time for one more. Who wants to jump in here? Victoria, We're going to take this call. Victoria. We're going to take this call from the beginning all the way to the end. Who wants to jump Good in morning. here first? Mark. Yeah. I'm going to go with. Uh, let's go. Uh, you know, you know who's not volunteering? Jason Wyndham thinks he's going to escape. He thinks Ooh. he's hiding. This morning. Jason, are you hiding? Uh, Jason Wyndham. No. Uh, uh, that uh, told me everything that I needed to know. <laughs> Jason, you're calling me from the start. Let's go. Ring, ring. Hello? Good morning, Chad. This is Jason Wyndham with EXP. I was calling about your house over there. On uh, the hey, street. Jason, listen, you and everybody else have been calling about my house. I've been getting 100 calls from your office specifically, and I just wanted to stop, Okay. Yeah, Chad, we're an aggressive office, and we saw that your house uh, didn't sell, and it actually should have sold. Chad, what do you think stopped the house from selling? No, that's not really any of your business. I don't want to answer any questions. Look, I'm not interested in any realtor or real estate services, so if you could just take me off your list, I'd appreciate hey, it. Thank Chad, you for your time. Hey, Goodbye. Chad, if I, brought, if I brought you an offer right now, would you take it? Maybe. Uh, it would depend. Do you have an offer, or are you wasting my time? Well, Chad, I actually have a database full of buyers that are actually looking for homes just like yours. So when you did get the home sold, Chad, what was the plan? That's none of your business. If you have if you have an offer for me and somebody's interested in buying my house, why do you need to know where I'm going? That's not really any of your business. Either you have one or you don't. Well, Chad, let's say I did bring you an offer. Are you prepared to pick up a move in the next 30, 30 days? Uh, maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Maybe. It would depend on the offer. It would depend on the circumstance. Totally, Chad. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here. Now, Chad, if uh, you know, if we could get you uh, get your house sold in the next 30 days, you know, what was the whole reason uh, that you put there your you house go. in the market? So, so we, you can't forget why you do that. You can't forget why you double down, right? Anytime, for those of you guys who are new on here, anytime somebody tells you that their motivation is none of your business, right? Or that they don't want to answer that question. What they're really saying is, tell me why I should ask that, answer that question. Tell me why that's relevant to us being on the phone together. And so we make this mistake, guys. All of you guys on this call make this mistake quite a bit. It's you ask that powerful question. So l let me let me just rephrase the question. If I brought you that offer, would you be able to move in the next 30 days, right? Would you be able to move out in the next 15 to 30 days? And they're going to say no, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure, right? But that's your whole reason for wanting to know their motivation, where they're going, what they're doing, right? And so anytime you put somebody in a position where they're like, I don't know, maybe, possibly, okay, great. So there's a lot of factors at play here. What was the plan when you put this house on the market in the first place? And now you command that answer. But as salespeople, once we get rejected once, we're so shy about going back in and asking that question again and doubling down, right? But I'm telling you, what, once, you once you put them in that position, guys, yes. you have to be able to get right into that question again. Otherwise, like again we talk about creating insecurity in the people that we're talking to if you ask that question and then you go so um, 30 days from now you wouldn't be able to move and you're digging your toe into the ground you're like so why did you put the all your energy and everything that you've put in all that momentum that you've created is gone right so Jason really quickly let's walk through that again why do you need to know where I'm going what difference does it make well Chad let's say I did bring you an offer you prepared to pick up a move in the next 30 days uh, probably not. I don't know. It would depend. It would depend on the offer, the circumstance. So I don't know. Okay. Well, it sounds to me like there's some moving parts here. So Chad, what was the whole goal when you put the house on the market in the first place? 
Uh, well, I'm retiring. I'm moving to Florida. I don't have to sell this house. If I don't want to, I'm not in a hurry. It's not a fire sale. So, I, you know, whether it sells or not, I, I'm not really pressed to do anything right now. But Jason, what's the point of this call? Well, Chad, it sounds to me like you, you had plans to go to Florida and those fell, fell through. So, Chad, have you decided that you're definitely going to be moving to Florida? It's not a matter of if, just a matter of when. Well, it doesn't matter. What's the point of this call? What do you want? Well, Chad, if I can get your home sold in the next 30 days, get you moved on to Florida, and then it sounds to me like that's the whole reason you put the house on the market in the first place, correct? Very good, but you got to take away my objection in that, right? And if my problem is like I'm insecure about the market, right? If my problem are, are the financials, take, take that away. And the minute, Jason, somebody tells you what the hell is the point of this call, right? Do them the service of, of, of getting right to it, right? Jason, ask me what the point of this call is. Chad, what's the point of this call? Jason, if I could show you a way to get this property under contract in the next seven to 10 days and make it make sense for you financially so that you could get down to Florida, but it sounds to me like that was the whole goal here, right? Offense, that's the difference, right? When somebody asks you the, what's the point, what they're really saying is you got, you got two and a half seconds to grab my attention again because I'm gonna hang up the phone. That's what they're really saying. So we've got to cut out all the non-valuable questions that don't mean anything to anybody. We are out of time, guys, this morning. I said at the beginning of the call, innovation is rewarded, execution is worship, and you got a decision to make right now. You're either gonna hang up on this call and go make yourself a ham sandwich, go get yourself a coffee, or your dad is ready, right? And, and you're gonna get a leg up on all of your competition by hitting the dial button right afterwards, logging into paid in full at eight o'clock, guys. On the count of three, I wanna hear exactly how many appointments you're not willing to leave the day without today. One, to who, as the owl would say, three. What is it? Two appointments. Let's get it, guys. Have a great day.